So let's do this. Uh, you know, you have uh, the pivot chart, okay, and the pivot table here, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember the process? How did we arrive at this? So it's selecting the data and go to insert, and then, yeah, no, not really there. Just 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 go to the snow to get the data. Yeah, right. So you go to the insert. Yeah. Pivot chart, pivot chart, and pivot table is the option that you select. Okay. Right. So, what does this give you? This gives you a combination of the information. Maybe uh, I would want you to save this as a different version, not to overwrite the existing uh, Excel that you have. saving yeah all right it's saved now <clears throat> so close the formats and click on the pivot table right so you get to choose the fields that you want to show it in the chart okay so here try to select you know maybe go to that uh, dashboard that you have uh, try to create one of the pivot okay So you want to ungroup that, um, the year, maybe you want to do that. Okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. So go to the file options, not really, uh, because you would have those three other things coming up. Okay, file options, okay. Go to the advanced, right here. You get to see uh, the pivot, you know, or auto combine the pivots. So scroll down. Charts, okay. And display. Okay, scroll down further. Only, okay. So can, can, can you go to the, uh, what, is, what is the first option that you have here? Okay. Can, can you go to the top option? The first one that's available? No, on, on the left, general. Okay, yeah, do you see that uh, interface options when using new workbooks? So can scroll down. There should be an option here in the formulas or in the data. Okay, in the data. Yeah, disable automatic grouping of date and time in pure tip, the last, last option. That's correct, yeah, tick on that. Okay, now, now try to recreate this pivot again. So delete the sheet. <laughs> Yeah, simply delete that sheet, okay, and then recreate uh, the same thing again using a pivot chart and tab table, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you have it in closed? What, what's exactly the data type in the closed? Um, it's the date, I believe. It's a date and time? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think you have a closed date. Yeah. 
closed month, I guess. Yeah, let's close date. Now you would get to see all the dates here. Okay. So yeah. maybe you would want to filter on the 2022 that you wanted to do. And before that, I would, I would uh, recommend few changes. Okay. So while you get this paper table, uh, yeah. So in, in search, in search, you know, what, what you can do is, uh, you know, uh, okay, I will, I'll, I'll give you a couple of uh, uh, tips as well on this. So the first thing we are going to change how the pivot format works, okay? Go to the, go to the pivot, you know, the uh, design or pivot table analyze, pivot table analyze, yeah, okay. So, okay, all right, you have this enabled already. So right click on the row labels. No, here in the pivot, in the pivot, right click on the row labels. Yeah. So pivot table options, right? Go to the uh, display. Right. So here, check the classic pivot table layout. Okay, see what happens now. So earlier you are having row labels as a title. Now you would get to see the close, close to date. Okay, so that this would give you <coughs> and clear uh, visually representing in terms of what is it, what is the field that we are selecting. Now you would want to select the 2022. So hit a hit a drop down there. And on the text filters, okay, value filters, okay, contains greater than or less than or in, in okay, label filters. Do you get to see that? Label filters. Okay. So contains 2022. Yeah, that's it. Right. So here, when once this isn't okay, this is by default. You need not change any of the filter, you know, unless you would want to go back to a previous year or maybe so on. Okay. By default, it's going to be 2022 here. Okay. Now uh, let's try to recreate one of the pivots, like maybe um, the close tickets. the count of closed tickets that's what you wanted right the count of tickets mm -hmm. you want to search in tickets I'm looking for the number thing. There it is. There we go. Okay. Okay. So now uh, here, if you, if you want to change the date, okay, maybe uh, the graph should be maybe in a line graph. You can try to change that graph. Okay, this looks similar to what you have now. Okay, now go to this pivot chart analyze on the top ribbon. Okay, so insert slicer. Right, so there you get to see the dates we have to insert the slicer on. Okay, so select the date. Not closed, a closed date, I guess. Closed date, yeah, select on that. So see here what happens is okay you get to see you can you can simply select the ones that you that you just wanted here okay mm -hmm. and there is also a bars you know that that you can have a kind of an uh, scroll you know from left to right kind of thing okay so this way is what you can do is you can connect this filter you know, in case if it is only closed but uh, you know, uh, if if there is a normal filter, by business would want to do it. You know, if you select that filter, all the rest of the things would get filtered by that specific business. Okay. So assuming you uh, you know in in the report connections, you go to the report connections here. Yeah. So it is connected to a pivot table too, which is which is the current pivot table. You can also connect the same slicer to the other pivot tables which are applicable. 
I think the pivot table four is the task category pivot that has a similar information as well. You know, you can also control that pivot with this slicer. Now, what, what is a slicer? What does it mean? It gives you kind of a dashboard look okay, where you could control a simply uh, in terms of uh, what you, what you want to filter out, okay, include exclude kind of a thing. So there is there is an uh, uh, date uh, kind of a filter and uh, scroll bar kind of a thing that you get it. You know, in, instead of this and to and from. Okay, uh, can you can you quickly check if if there is any um, way that you can give me the control? It's it's going to be quick. I'll show it to you. Um, I don't have an, anything coming up that says I can do it. Hmm. That's why I was asking if you had a request. Because I don't see Oops. it give control at all. Okay, one, one second. Let's, uh, uh, so you stop the screen share. Maybe let me try to do that and see where, where, do, where do I get the option. Okay, just a second. Okay. Stop the screen share. Yeah. Yeah. So you you joining this through the web or through the app? Yep, I'm on the web. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. So I get to see this remote control on the screen bar itself. Yeah, I don't have that. You don't have that. Okay. Okay. Mm, all right. So let's uh, maybe let's resume the screen share. I'll I'll take you through that. I was just trying to click with the option to share the screen. All right. So while, right. So this, this is this is where we can, um, you know, we can get to link to the multiple pivot charts, you know, the close the uh, slicer. So that whenever you select a specific set of filters that will get automatically applied over there. Okay. Now, uh, let's, Now let's move on to uh, the other set of things here. Okay. So while while we create this, okay, this this is this is the graph that you wanted wanted to have. Okay. Now, uh, can you go to the slicer settings here? On the left hand side. Yeah. Right. Okay. So hide items with no data. Can you check on that? Right. That's it. So see what happens here. Okay. So right. So let's move on. Uh, on to the graphs that we have. So uh, you do you show the last fifteen days of the information? That's that's what you do. The last we three days the of last time. five. Last last five days. Right? Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. You can there, there is a functionality where you can use uh, where you can you can simply create that. Okay, the so last week, yeah, that's correct. Date filters and then last week and then so on. You know, even on the pivot, you could do that. Yeah, it, it is it is found itself. I'm trying to see why it's not broken up by day anymore. It's just
So that is still a pivot, right? What whatever you have it over there, or is it just just the data? Huh? Is it is it just the data that you have it uh, for the graph, or is it coming up from the pivot? This um, is coming from the pivot. This yeah. is a pivot. That's a pivot, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you can if you can get the same thing, you know, closed and the number count of yeah, number. That's right. That's what I did. It's not showing up as um, they close to number. I don't know why it's coming in as month. So I'm trying to fix uh, a group. So that's it. Goodbye. Days. Or days, yeah. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So uh, the slicers <clears throat> can help you to actually filter out the last seven, seven days of the information. So you already have it in the pivot. However, assuming on the data set, you would want to do this. Right? The slicers can be a best option for you. you now, this is just the one filter that you have. What if, if you wanted to give them an interactivity among closed tickets and open tickets and in last year? If you want to do that now, we can do that. Okay. Uh, so the data model for this needs to be changed. So if if you are actually representing the same way, so is it is it for an internal report that you do or is it something? Yeah, it's an in internal format? report. We do it every day, and I take um, screenshots of the graphs and put them into a PowerPoint. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So what we could do here is maybe you know this is this is going to uh, we can we can mostly automate this okay so this you show it as uh, the last week the, the total okay this is the close tickets okay and moving on to the uh, tickets by associate what what do we see on that. It mostly is automated. I mean, mm -hmm. I have to paste in the data set and then I just calculate it and refresh the pivot tables. And right. I really don't have to do anything except for like this, which I have to do manually. Um, mm -hmm. And this one where I have to adjust the labels. So it really isn't bad. Um, right. Right. As far so as maybe if you, can, if, you can, if you can create this, okay, right, right, click on this, and then go to the labels. Okay, right. Okay. I think so, because of the chart type, so it's like the mm -hmm. with the the area underneath the labels don't fix themselves. Okay, so what, what I would recommend is, okay, you try to reset the graph, okay? Format, go to the format on right hand side. Okay, there'll be, okay, there's going to be a reset, reset the graph, okay? Can you go to the design itself? Okay, reset to match style. Okay, reset to match style in the format, okay? Go to the format on the left hand side, you gotta see this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reset that, okay? You, you try to change the dates now. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So this this is this is this is how it's going to be. And maybe if you want to change the chart type, so it can it can automatically adjust to uh, you know the the types that you have. Maybe you want to change the format the way that it looks. Yeah, it's okay. It really doesn't take me a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, I think they'd prefer to have it this way. Okay, um, gotcha. If I go change, because it goes to higher ups at our company. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, I would I'd spend slightly some time on this. Okay. Maybe you know if if we were to do this uh, uh, by associates. Okay. Uh, do you do you know maybe this should be this shouldn't be on the uh, you know on the trend so usually on the analytics on the data analytics on the representation what you really see is 
if this is a monthly information, the representation of what you have it here, it makes sense. But it is peer comparison, or maybe if you, if you were to say the uh, you know the total count of uh, the tickets on 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 a, in a month, maybe if that if that is what I see it here, right? So that if that is the case, you know the trend may not make sense. You know, maybe if you if you want to do a bubble chart, you now where where it really gives you i mean not not to replicate what you have i mean not to replace what you have right now but a recommendation chart would be a bubble chart or there is an area chart you know that's that's something that you could select that would uh, clearly showcase you know what's um, what is the what is the total total size that has been solved for okay and secondly in terms of uh, the bubble chart that we show, the uh, you know it gives you the volume. I mean, the circle represents the number of the things. Or you know, even if you if you want to do this uh, at a tree map as well. So if you can go to the maps, you know, I'll, I'll quickly spend like quick two or three minutes on this, so that you know the representation of the graphs uh, can be done better. I mean, this this is an area chart basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you can if you can go to the uh, change chart type. Okay. So this is this is what you have. And maybe if you want to do an uh, tree map, you know, try try to select the tree map here. Yeah. You cannot do this because it needs a different chart type. Uh, okay, it's, it's only one to one kind of a thing. Okay, we need two two dimensions over there. Okay, and uh, all right. Or you could do you could do uh, a bar graph with the ascending of it. Okay, where you have yeah, the, this could be a right representation of it. Not 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 the stack bar. Yeah, just just this. Okay, what does it do? Is it gives you a, a total font. Maybe if you want to assign, uh, you know, keep the keep the things assigned or uh, I know designed. Kind of a thing, you could, you could still have it. Maybe maybe that that chart because it, it was taking the uh, data labels here yeah, or there, so you could do that. And if you wanted to uh, you know uh, arrange the data in such a way that you could you know maybe on the right right click on the thirty first jam on the pivot, okay, on the pivot, right, and then sort it. No. On, on on the pivot please. On on the numbers on the numbers. Thirty first yeah. Right. Sort it ascending. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you have it. Yeah, just just on thirty first yeah. Right click on thirty first yeah. Right and yeah sort. Ascending on, okay. on on the on the number. If you if you can select the number, okay. Control Z. Yeah, just just the number. Right click on it. Mm -hmm. Sort it. What's happening to that? Is it moving around? Okay. I think it's a pivot chart as well, even this one. Yeah, that's fine. See, uh, we can we can recreate that pivot and then get it out. But you know, usually this is this is how. You can represent it. Maybe if you wanted to highlight, uh, because the trend, I mean, the graph, what uh, we had earlier, uh, is is not the uh, you know suitable graph for it. Okay, if you want to do it, like you know, uh, ascending or descending, I, th I think that's going to be useful to see. You know, uh, uh, maybe the associate, you know, who's doing it below average or above average kind of a thing. Even you can draw a median to this. Okay, so you can add a median chart as well onto this. Right click on that, and that would give you various options onto it. Right on the graph, 
Right. Okay. So all right. So can can you can you go to the change chart type? Now here uh, you would have where the medians are not coming up here. So can you go to the combo uh, at the last? Right. So yeah, can you do that? It's it's not coming out. Okay, at least two series of data. Okay, maybe maybe if you can have an average things out. So we can we could select that average one. You know, at the at the center of the screen. Okay, just just cancel this out. Okay, so assuming the average is going to be 25, 15, around say uh, 16 or 17. Okay, we get to see the outliers, you know, who are who are below the average of the entire entire associates and so on. You know, if, if that is that is what we want to do, that name and <laughs> picking picking up a name and calling them out. Right, if you want to do that, that's that's how uh, you can you can also create these graphs. Right, so they visually indicate, you know, what what you want to say it as part of the story. Now, what's the average? What's the team's average? And who is below the average as well? So we can add a trend line. You know, uh, maybe uh, if you can click on the pivot and go to the design design of it. Click the uh, no, sorry sorry pivot chart 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 and analyze. Yeah. Okay. So okay, sorry the the design. There has to be an add chat element. Where do you see this uh, error bars with trend line? Okay, click on trend line. Okay, so yeah, that's linear. Okay, uh, but if you want, if you wanted to see that exponential uh, thing, so the linear would directly show you the starting and the other ones. Okay, uh, maybe moving average or something like that you click on the moving average the last one right so that's okay you, you could you could take off that so the moving average is is basically that okay and uh, the yeah linear forecast or exponential okay uh, so, so so you can you can say more trending options okay more trend line options and then you can add them or you can create your own trending kind of a thing okay um Okay, it, 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 it can be an uh, I would I would strongly recommend the moving average kind of a charge, but it shouldn't it shouldn't be a two period or kind of a thing. So it should be it should simply be a period over there. That's where you get to see the uh, graphs. So there are this is this is one way of doing it. The other way is you can you can simply insert a column which calls it as an average and you could you could do that average as well and then put it into a combo chart that would give you an, an average of it. Okay, so there are there are multiple ways of representing this information. Okay, and uh, what I would what I would recommend is you know try to explore these options with the data that you have. Okay, and uh, then take it up from there. Uh, that how do we best represent this information? Okay. Any, any questions? Nope. Okay. So I hope you have seen these options as well. And uh, now switch rows and columns. Okay. If, if you can, if you can do that, the switch row or column on the data that I see it on the design tab. Yeah. So see what happens is you know since it's a pivot table, pivot chart, you know that that you are not able to represent that. But in in case you just have a simple data, right? So that's that's how it's it's going to be. Uh, it's it's going to change the charts type around of it. Okay, that's assuming you have date towards uh, you know on the x-axis and you have uh, on the y-axis maybe um, the sales or maybe the uh, persons who have closer tickets. You know that that would go up. And, you know the the numbers would come down and the dates would be uh, on the x and y. And that would replace that. So that's the switch forward column here, and in the change chart type, you you already are aware of it. So the only one thing you know which which you which you are having problem with is maybe the uh, the the uh, I'll say the chart elements of it. You know where we 
wanted to see the numbers you know right next to it so this is one of the representation okay and uh, maybe if you want to go out to the specific uh, columns that we have where we wanted to drag or maybe change the chat uh, source data I, I think there is there's one of the chat that you showed me if you can go to that chat yeah mm -hmm. Not this, not this one. Uh, that there's a chart that uh, you are changing the data source, right? I mean, you're moving up and down of the data. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. And so, this takes me two seconds, so it doesn't yeah. bother me to do it. Mm -hmm, it's literally mm -hmm. just these are the these are pulling from elsewhere in the sheet so i know what mm -hmm. to populate it for for the day and then mm -hmm. i just drag this down that's it right, right. so gotcha. yeah two seconds i understand, I understand. That, that's that's not a big deal yeah so any any other issues on the data on the data that uh, data manipulation or you know uh, the data enhancement well, that you're having with we want to break this up now so um the sla for our um tasks is usually seven days mm -hmm. uh, but we want to move it up to like two and a half weeks for a certain type i believe it's just the uh new hire two plus associates um mm -hmm. i have to verify that with my supervisor um mm -hmm. but this so instead of like this is our aging mm -hmm. and so over sla is this um anything eight days and over um mm -hmm. that's going to change for this type so I, I i'm not really worried about it and it's not due at any time so i have time to just like mess around okay. with it okay. what i think i'm going yeah. to do is mm -hmm. um maybe do a like a yes no thing like is it this type is it not this type for each um request have a, a, another column Mm -hmm. And then from there, just break out the aging um, for the reports. So I'm not really worried about it. Uh, that's okay. that's something a little further down the line. But sure. the reporting, yeah. it really takes me like maybe like 10 minutes max at the mm -hmm. end of each day. So mm -hmm. I'm not worried about it. I was yeah, just wondering great. if that's that was great. something we could do in access. So yeah, gotcha. So even, so even we can we can get this done in the access database however um, you know you may not be able to do this uh, uh, the charts as good as uh, you know that you, that you have it here okay so access database it's primarily the data maybe on the reports maybe you can get few few of the things but the changes that you have the formulations that you have it here are are going to be quite um, you know uh, heavy i would say so I understand that this 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 is having you know one more thing that I would want to say so since this is uh, uh, the the test file okay whenever you copy a data right whenever you do a pivot the entire data comes with it and what is a file of this size I mean what is a, a file size of this should be somewhere around 15 20 MB or 5 MB this is 5 MB okay so the yeah it's just close to 5 mb so what i would do is maybe uh you know if i were you i would simply delete uh the pivot that would carry the data okay i'll tell you what it is okay just just go to go to the excel okay this would be quite helpful when you're pivoting a larger sets of data okay assuming you have 100 mb 200 mb of data that may not be the current scenario but later on if you have any such excels Right. So what I do is, okay, just, just just go to that, select any other pivot and tell you where the option is. Okay. Your table analyze. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Right click on that. Right click on that. Right. Pivot table options. Go to data. Right. So here, save source data with file. Okay. If you check this every time that you do so which is nothing but you know you have created say assuming you have a 10 pivots you have created 10 copies of your data at the beginning of the, uh, the session that i told you right you know in excel you know we're going to copy the data multiple times 
this is what is happening. So there is an option that you could disable this. Okay, uncheck that. Yeah. Okay. And say okay to it. Let's see what happens. Okay. That's fine. Right. Now save the file. Okay. Now look at the file size. It should slightly reduce. Okay. It moved to four MB now. Okay. You can you can further reduce it by doing the same thing with all the pivots. So what what really happens here is I'm delinking the data from the pivot uh, table. However, the pivot table is linked to the entire data source. Okay. I'm not changing the uh, the way that it works. Okay. You save the file, reopen the file. That's going to refresh automatically for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a way to refresh all the pivots. Okay, just just go to that Excel. I have it up here. Yeah, the refresh all. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's that's where you know uh, uh, it it refreshes. Uh, you know when when you click on it. Else there is an option as well. Okay, right click on this pivot and pivot table options. Okay, so. Um, go to the data, but refresh data when opening the file. Okay. You click on this automatically. Whenever you open the uh, Excel, all the data tabs, all the all the pivots would get refreshed automatically. Okay, so assuming that uh, you are you are sourcing this feed directly from an uh, SharePoint list, assuming that, that you have the snow tickets on the SharePoint and you want to download. And every time you don't need to refresh the like 20 or 30 pivots, right? You simply you simply do this and then it takes in the order. You know, first the data sets would get refreshed, second the, the formulas right next to the data sets, and third the pivots would get refreshed. So it goes in the sequence. And when you have a larger data sets, this is going to be helpful for you. Okay, and refresh data when opening the file and uncheck the save source data with the file. Maybe if you want to take a screenshot and store it, uh, you know, does that we are going through that? Yeah. Right. These are the recommended settings. Right. Okay. So while we click on this, there's going to be a lot of other fields, you know, where we have uh, the uh, data to show up and to optimize it as well. Okay, there are there are further optimizations that we can do. And do you experience that, you know, when you when you when you copy paste this to a PPT, how do you send it? Do you take a, snip, a snapshot and then a snippet and then send it on the email or? Yeah, so I'll do the I'll use the Windows snipping tool. Windows snipping tool. Okay. I'll just okay. do this. Um, for most of them, I can right click and copy. I just need mm. to do it for um, the ones I have to update. So this one I'd have to do the screenshot of, but this one I can just copy because I have the actual graph over here. Right. And then this is a picture of the graph, so I can just mm -hmm. right click, copy it, and put it in. So it saves me a, right. a few seconds. Right. Right. So yeah, no. What what I'm saying is, you know, now now we have just like maybe a twelve graphs or ten graphs. Okay. Assuming you prepare a deck which which we have like around 100, 150 graphs. You know, that's that's a real life use case. Okay. So what really happens over there is we can we can with the help of the macros we can simply copy paste this out as well. Okay. So if you know instead of snipping, you know there, there are other ways to uh, uh, really you know paste that. Okay. Maybe the ones that you want to snip now maybe simply copy that and paste it as an image. You know you need not have the uh, snipping tool over there. I can, I can share that with you. Okay, just just try to simply copy any of the uh, chat. All right, simply copy that. Okay, go to the PPT. I right click change picture from clipboard, and then that's the new one. Yeah, that's new. That's correct. That's that's one way to look at. But that's one way to do it. The other way is on the paste, okay. Assuming that you would want to paste it onto the new chat, okay. 
uh, as I mean, this, this, this we don't have it um, as part of the formats, right? So on the left hand side, on the left hand side, uh, on, the, on the pivots, sorry, on, on the PPT itself, on the pivot, uh, on the paste, on the paste, sorry. N not here, on the left hand side, under the home menu, there's a paste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you see this, the third icon, paste as image. Okay. Paste as picture. Okay. So even this can be done. But since you have already the formats, you could simply update them and, uh, you know, update from the clipboard. Right. And we could, we could also build a quick macros, but that's not really required because the volume of work is quite, quite smaller. Okay. So, but I'm telling you these options are available you know, in case you would want to explore this at a later stage. Feel free to do 